Hello and welcome back to another video. In this one I'm going to show you a few ways how to make good looking bases, especially if you have to do a lot of them. If you are collecting a Warhammer army or any kind of miniature wargame, you are probably aware that it's a lot of work to 1. paint the miniatures and 2. do the basing on the miniatures after you have painted them or before. But there's a solution to it. Actually there isn't a solution. You are going to have to do the bases and you're going to have to put some time into it. But there are easy ways to create great looking bases without spending too much time on them. And for that I'm going to show you a few techniques I really like to use to create the bases on my armies as I'm showing you here. The first thing you have to do is figure out what environment you want to place your miniatures in. And then probably in most cases you have to texture the base. There are tons of ways to texture a base. There are tons of types of textures you can use for your base. In most cases I just go for the traditional put PVA on the base and sprinkle some sand over it. Here I'm showing you baking soda which is really nice over some uh, super glue. It gets really hard and creates a subtle texture. You can use base ready mixes as I'm showing you here. These are from Geek Gaming Scenics. Slight rubble sand mixes. Or you can just use beach sand or sand you got from some gravel pit outside. My first rule when doing bases is uh, if it looks good, it looks good, despite it being not realistic because of the scale of the sand or something else. Because if you actually think about scale, these sand things should be really, really, really extremely small. So baking soda would be the perfect thing to simulate something like beach sand. But it won't look like beach sand in our eyes because we abstract from it. So just try a few things and see what looks good and go with that. I'm going to talk about painting these types of surfaces a bit later in the video. First I also wanted to say if you are going to sprinkle sand over PVA, go in with some very thin PVA glue and drip that all over the surface. This helps to harden and bind all the sand. You won't have too many bits that flake off while painting. Another way to texture your base is with texture paste. You can get these in all kinds of grain sizes from all kinds of brands and with different colors. This depends on what look you are going for, if you want to paint them afterwards or if you want to leave them. If you are doing that, just consider to push in some tufts before they dry. This really helps to integrate the tufts into the environment, especially if you're going for something like a muddy look or a forest ground. Here I'm showing you a few examples. In this case I also put some rocks in and some skulls. This I do before I put the sand on. And on this example I put in some plastic card steel beams and guitar string and pipes to simulate some debris. This I also did before I did the gravel and this helps again just to integrate these bits and bobs into the environment. And before I get to painting here you can see a few samples I did for this video with a lot of different materials. And you can really go wild with your bases and go for something you like and you enjoy to paint afterwards. Now on to painting. So in most cases you are going for probably something nature related and you are going to use some browns. I use a lot of different browns as an undercoat for most bases just to have some variety. I also try to have a variety from base to base so I don't use the same brown on every base. But obviously you have to choose your paints depending on the environment you want to set your miniatures in. A really quick way to paint your bases especially if you use texture paint with some coloring in it, is just to put a shade over it. This just helps to put some shadows around the rocks and tie everything together. And here you can see me painting the base with the brown paints. And for this I'm going to wet blend the paints so they run into each other a bit. I'm going for very thin down browns and this is also better for your brushes and easier to paint the sand grain with because the paint flows and looks for a way around the rocks instead of you having to stab the paints into all the recesses. And always remember you can paint a texture paste even if it has a color already. There are no rules when it comes to basing and I most of the time see the color of the texture paint just as a nice base coat I don't have to apply. And the same goes for sand. Sand already has a color, feel free to use that color and work with it. For example in this case the sand already has a nice variety of color and I want to keep that so I'm just going to put a shade over it to tie everything together and to shade between the rocks. 
This is probably one of the easiest and fastest way to base your army. I tend to base my miniatures before I prime them, so most of the time my sand gets primed black, so I can't really use that method. But it is a good option and I really recommend to do it, especially if you want to do a lot of miniatures really fast in a really easy basing scheme. And now onto one of my favorite basing techniques, pigments. I really love to use pigments, they are a mess occasionally, but you can use them carefully and apply them carefully and you won't have to clean up everything afterwards. When applying dry pigments they pretty much fuse together naturally, so you don't have to have two small increments of color changes when you use them. Mostly four colors, a dark, a br middle brown, a light brown and a beige are fine. If you want something reddish go with rust tones. But you don't have to have like every part of the brown color wheel to create nice pigment bases. And here again, pigments are pigments. You can use any brands, you can use pigments from the craft store, you can also use chalk that you ground down to the yeah, pigment consistency. I would just recommend getting a few and trying them out for yourself and see if you like them. Another tip when applying pigments just use a napkin or a towel, something you can wash or throw away around, around under your base so you don't create too much of a mess on your desk because it is not that easy to clean it up afterwards. And to apply the pigment just put some on your brush, you will notice that it sticks really nice in the bristles of the brush and stab them into your base and go really hard at it, don't be too careful with your brush, use a brush you can throw away afterwards or a brush you use only for pigments and just stab it on and go in with a few colors, stab them around, see how the pigment behaves and you can always go back with some darker pigments or some lighter pigments to change the result afterwards. And for fixing the pigments you can use something like airbrush thinner, you can use something like pigment fixer or pigment binder but I tend not to use them because they create this wet surface and it dries and the matte look goes away in a way and I just like the look of a dry pigment. Most of the time you aren't going to grab the miniatures on the base or like throw them around too much so the pigment mostly stays on it. Sometimes they have some bits fall off but that's usually not really something that changes the look of it. Even if a lot of it falls off, you can always go back and put some more pigment on it. So I won't bother with uh, fixing my pigment bases. And you also don't have to cover the whole base with the pigment. It is often sufficient to just go in on a few places, just rub a little bit of pigment in, just to create that dry, matte, dusty look. And it will already improve the base of your simple sand or like texture paste. For example on my salamanders I really didn't use a lot of pigments, I just used a bit around the metal parts and around the feet to tie the miniature into the base and to create some more variety. The same goes for the raven guard I painted, I just put a little bit of pigment around the feet to tie the miniature in with the environment, I put a little bit around some tufts and just a few little bits of pigment around the base just to create a more real and dusty look. On my Sons of Horus on the other side I went all in with the pigments. I didn't even paint the gravel I put on the base. I just went in with a few different brown and dark pigments and then went over it with this light pigment to simulate some ashes that have settled to or to simulate some stirred up earth around the feet. Another quick tip as you saw on my Raven Guard you can use uh, tufts and pigments combined and it really helps to put pigments over the tufts to tie them together with the environment. Speaking of tufts, this is another great way to improve your bases and get away with really simple basing. I like to use a lot of tufts just to simulate some earthy and woody ground floor and just use a lot of different sizes and colors for this. The more variety you have, the more realistic it gets. I mean, don't combine too much different things, otherwise it will look silly. But if you go for like these gamers grass tufts in all these different greens and woody colors, you can't go wrong with using a great variety of them. 
As you can see here in the diorama I built, using a lot of different tufts with a lot of different variation really creates a coherent looking environment and a kind of realistic looking environment. Because if you use less tufts, as often people do, like put one tuft on the base, it just looks out of place and silly. That's not something you would see in nature. In nature you would see these big patches of grasses, these big patches of like plant life together. So I would really recommend using rather more tufts than less. And that's pretty much all I have to say about basic. I still think, and it's, and this is pretty much all I have to say about basing. I think these are great techniques to create good looking bases really easy and really fast. These don't take too much time to paint, don't take too much time to build. And I really like the results. I hope you do as well. I know this wasn't the most instructional video as always, but I hope you could take some tips away from it and you stick around for the next videos.